the question that everyone wants to know is, what does Peyton Manning think of these quarterbacks and the Broncos situation? We're here to talk about that and more. It is Orange and Blue today. Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason, and Mace. We know Peyton Manning knows quarterbacks. What do you think he knows about the Broncos' intent? Well, he knows quarterbacks, and he has phone numbers, and he knows how to get people on the phone, although we'll get into how he actually had a little bit of trouble <laughs> getting to J.J. McCarthy earlier this offseason. Right. But he is somebody who maybe isn't in the draft rooms, but there's information that crosses his path. And so when he pops on radio, like he did uh, on a one Oh four, three, the fan this afternoon to chat with his good buddy, Brian Stokely and Josh Dover, the co-host, because of course Peyton was out with Stoke at the nuggets playoff game last night. It's like the old EF Hutton commercial. When Peyton Manning talks, people listen. Right. And there's some interesting stuff that Peyton Manning said today. Well, and I like the fact that Peyton Manning is a resource. I believe, yeah. and Peyton doesn't say this, but I'm just going to say what I believe. I believe he's a resource for Greg Penner. I think it was a resource for Sean Payton. And I know other resources that Sean Payton uses as well. And I'm like, I like this idea of, you know, having your war room, trusting your scouts, trusting George Payton, but also checking in with guys like Peyton to see what he has to say. Exactly. I mean, being around Peyton Manning and having him be in your orbit as he still is with the Broncos. Sorry, Colts. Peyton identifies more with the Broncos in retirement based on where he lives, based on who he's around. Not that he doesn't respect the Colts, not that he doesn't appreciate everything in Indianapolis, but he's sure. still very much in the Broncos orbit. And if you have him willing to be around, it's like being next to a library, right? You'd be nuts not to walk in and check out the books. You'd be nuts not to listen to Peyton Manning because he does get information. Don't forget the other thing on, on Peyton Manning, being a part of the Manning Passing Academy for so long, a lot of these prospects come through his come through his sphere and under his watch at some point in the past. So he is uniquely plugged in to quarterback prospects uniquely plugged in as a source of uh, as a source of information and that's why some of the things he said he talked about jj mccarthy we'll get into him talking about zach wilson as well there's some interesting right. things here right so a lot of interesting things and i love the way that peyton uh still loves this game and, and the way that he sees the game mace you know i when i talked to chris harris on friday i said what do you look for on quarterbacks he's talking about swagger that's what Peyton Manning has 1000% mm -hmm. and he's going to know it. I've always often said it balls, ball knows ball, right? Guys that play usually know other guys that can play and they can identify it. They can see things that you and I, as much as we study, we can't see because we didn't live it. We didn't experience like the way Peyton Manning did. Exactly. So, you know, there are people that are probably thinking, when are we going to get to the fireworks factory? right right when do we get to the so let's go factory? let's 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 hear from peyton manning talking about jj mccarthy i actually had a conversation with jj mccarthy the other day uh, i texted him stoke after the national championship uh i never met him but in, uh, we invited him to our to our football camp and like harbaugh wouldn't let him miss a workout so he didn't get to go and so i just reached out and said hey man congratulations you know wish you the best of luck in your next chapter and I guess he thought it was a prank because he never he never <laughs> called me back. So I texted him Monday, you know, from the same number, and he's like, "Oh, it really is you." I thought that was that somebody was pranking me, and so I just kind of wished him luck. And he said, hey, "I'd love to ask you some questions." So he called me back, and uh, boy, impressive to talk to. And uh, I know Denver's very interested in him, and it sounded like you know this is a place he'd love to come to. So, uh, but it's a little bit out of his control. A little bit out of his, his control, but. Actually, not necessarily. He could, he could play draft hardball like Eli Manning did, right, twenty right. years ago, and say, "Hey, I want to come to Denver." But that's not the type of. I don't think that's the type of person and and prospect JJ McCarthy is. I think, in his experience, if he ended up with Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota, he'd be feeling pretty good. I think if he ended up with Denver and Sean Payne, he'd be feeling pretty good as well. Yeah, he'd be feeling good about his prospects, and I just love what Peyton says. I believe the Broncos really like him or really love him. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing but like you 
you know, stuff's coming together. Can you pull it off though? That's the thing. Do you have to move up a little? Do you have to move up a lot? Can you secure JJ McCarthy, who plenty of people think is Sean Payton's guy? Denver's very interested in him. Sounds like a place he'd love to come to. I mean, this is all nice, right? This is all, it feels good. But I feel like I'm the, uh, the bucket of cold water here because not so much because of the trade yesterday, although basically what that is now, that's another, it's another dart to throw at the board is Zach Wilson, someone who was a number two overall pick. I don't think it changes the plan, the Broncos hopes of getting up. I think it just maybe makes them say, okay, there's a level that we're not willing to go beyond in terms of draft capital where we say, okay, we could trade up for JJ McCarthy, but we could stand pat and move down and get bonix and get capital because you know what? We do have this, you know, we we do have a lottery ticket sitting here that if we move down and get bonix or Michael Panix Jr. With this lottery ticket, we we have, we basically have two shots of hitting the bullseye. Not great. Not maybe not as great a shot as JJ McCarthy would be, but two shots at hitting the bullseye. So you're playing the, maybe you're playing the percentages a little bit, even though you may love JJ. I, I do say, if you love JJ, go get JJ, period. Yeah. You love your guy, go get takes. your guy. And Wilson did change the draft plan, Mace, as you and I mentioned yesterday. It means no Milton. It means no Pratt. If you get your first round guy, it means no Devin Leary or whatever. Like, that's what Zach Wilson is. If you're wanting two quarterbacks to be added this offseason, and we knew for some time, Two quarterbacks would be added. Well, your first of two just got added. His name's Zach Wilson. Right. That's that's what it does. Takes you out of it. It could still be Pratt if they just decide to punt on quarterback on day one and even day two entirely. Then I think it very well could be Michael Pratt. Um, I I do not envy the Broncos marketing team trying to promote a Jarrett Stidham, Zach Wilson, Michael Pratt quarterback room but I think they do just fine promoting a quarterback room that had JJ McCarthy or Bo Nix because Would be. especially if, especially with Bo Nix specifically, if you draft in round one, the round one status does matter. It yes. does in terms yes. of, in terms of uh, what you're, you know, what you're trying to do, what, you know, a little bit of the sizzle, but can you trade down and get to Bo Nix? Possibly uh, Eric at home had a, had his um, latest mock draft out he's got a trade with the Broncos and the Philadelphia Eagles and the Broncos moving down to 22 and getting, and, uh, and getting Bo Nix. That's something that could well be reasonable. Yes. There's two teams in the top 10 to monitor really closely besides Minnesota. who's not in the top 10, but still it's like, okay, what does new England do? Is it really going to be Drake made three? And then what do the giants do? The quarterback they've done the most work on is Bo Nix, but they're not taking Bo Nix at number six. They'll take a wide receiver, Give them Roma Dunze or whoever at six. I actually being like neighbors um, working on my first mock draft maze. Can you tell? Uh, so checking in yeah. with people around the league, like, yeah, the giants are interested in Bo Nix in the first round, not at six. So yeah. wide receiver and then trade back in the end of the first and get Bo Nix. So you can move back, but Mace be careful. Yeah. You're taking a roll of the dice there. And it's a question of how far you want to move down to feel good to where you, you feel good. And also, I mean, what if you trade from 12 to 22, you move down, and then what if the Giants re-jump you? Right, and exactly. Pick 20 or 21. I mean, uh, that's the sort of thing that could happen. It could be like uh, uh, it, it could it could be like when I was a kid, and you remember when in checkers you 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 go to one end of the board and they say king me, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I I played a game that with with flying kings where if once you got a king that you just go all over, <laughs> they could go. Yes. From one end to the other, they could jump like six spots, right? Yep. And and jump your pieces and all that. That's that's what it would feel like. It'd be a little bit of a wild hopscotch back and forth. Um, if that happens. And then I mean that would be uh that would that would be pretty heartbreaking for the Broncos. There's if if that's their plan, if the plan is trade down and try to get Bo Nix, there are gonna be some tight sphincters at Sanctuary Health Training Center for Probably, you know, how long does it take to do 10 picks? I mean, it, it, let's assume every let's assume seven minutes a pick because not everyone's taking the full time. Um, 
It's about an hour That's and a half. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a. a it's gonna the, the sphincters are gonna tighten for about an hour and a half there, at Broncos HQ as they wait out as as they wait out that trade. Unless they move up, can they do it? And the Zach Wilson mm-hmm. thing. Let's transition to that. And I've got two clips. Yes. I didn't label them, May, so it's on me. I'm just gonna play the first. We'll react. I'll play the second. We react. But so many people yesterday in our show, and thank you all for clicking and liking the video and all those sorts of things. Like such a response you know hey this is a great deal it didn't cost anything broncos get a lottery ticket hey this is terrible wilson sucks so it's i guess it's perfect for sports conversation right um but when you hear from peyton manning and what peyton manning has to say about zach wilson mace i think uh some people might be changing their tune let's play that first clip no i think it probably is a reboot right sean peyton has a unique system um not necessarily much carryover from any of the systems that you know that Zach has been in. So, uh, and I think for Zach, I think a reboot actually is good, right? Let's just kind of let's just sort of start over, right? And let's just uh, let let Sean Payton and his staff uh, coach you, and uh, you know, kind of start from ground zero, which which I think might be just what Zach needs. Uh, so, uh, look, you know, obviously Stidham's here. I saw Jared uh, uh, yesterday. I was over at the facility and. You know, we'll see how the draft plays out. But, you know, it looks like there could be some good competition, which hopefully makes everybody better. And I, I'm sure that's what Sean uh, is trying to create. Uh, so um, but I think, you know, I'm sure Zach, you know, probably uh, may have been there today. They're, you know, they're kind of in their phase one where, you know, Sean's a little bit different. Sean likes to use this for his first few weeks really just to lift and to train, really get these guys physically, you know, kind of prepare for the season. Uh, it's a different approach than some other teams take. And so I think the sooner Zach Wilson gets in here, the better. Yeah, even though Sean Payton won't be meeting with Zach Wilson, at least it gives him a chance to get around his teammates. Right. And uh, and get to know them and kind of get on the same page with them. Although I will say this, the guy I feel badly for is Ben DiNucci because – he probably has to see the writing on the wall now, doesn't he? They yeah. trade for Zach Wilson, and if they draft a quarterback, is there room at the end for four quarterbacks, especially when whoever you draft, you want to get him some reps, and you do want to get Zach Wilson some reps because you want to find out. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it might not be good tidings for the nukes. He may have been better served by going to the UFL. Well, one thing uh, we know is that anything is possible. There is a chance that they keep Danucci and not Stidham and keep Wilson as the backup to J.J. McCarthy. There's a chance. I'm not saying it'll work or it'll happen, but like, yeah, and this is just the nature of the league. So, you know, he knows the deal. He took a shot. He took a chance on himself. And, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I, I appreciate him for that. Okay. Now. The thing on on Jared Stidham, if they did that, I mean, it's interesting with Stidham. He, of course, has a $7 million cap figure for this year, right? Right. But based on how things are structured, the Broncos would save $5 million by cutting him. Because what you've got is... um, You've got a million dollar guaranteed salary. You got a million dollars there. That's the prorated portion of the signing bonus. The rest of it is in base salary and uh, per game bonuses. So, yeah, that's why you would save $5 million if you cut Jared Stidham. Now, I don't think they're going to cut Jared Stidham. I think Sean Payton still wants to keep turning pages on Jared Stidham just to see. He told us that at the coach's breakfast. Because remember, I asked him, like, how do you know when a guy goes from that's just who he is or potential to that's just who he is? And he's and about Stidham specifically. And Sean told us, like, I don't think we're there yet with him. And I guess he doesn't think they're there yet with Zach Wilson as well, because otherwise, why would you trade for him? Mm -hmm. That's one with Zach Wilson. That is that's a little bit of uh, intellectual arrogance, I would say, believing that, okay. Everything that went on in New York was wrong. Yeah, we know New York is a bit of a dumpster fire, right? Everything that went on in New York is wrong, and we're going to get him right. Well, a couple of things I would warn, I would, I would offer as counsel. First of all, if you bring up the Nathaniel Hackett factor, well, 
Nathaniel Hackett was only there last year before that, you know, before that wasn't the same thing. Although you look back and you do wonder how things might've been different if Greg Knapp had not tragically been killed when he was uh, riding on his bike in the 2021 off season, Knapp was supposed to be Zach Wilson's, you know, past game coordinator, quarterback coach. And of course, uh, that's a, another person who's tightly connected to Peyton Manning because Napper yes. was Peyton's final quarterback coach while he was in Denver. And uh, so I do, I, I actually do wonder if that connection does maybe make Peyton Manning think, okay, what if on Zach Wilson, what if it had been different? And maybe there's some more pages left to turn here. Actually, do you want, let's play the uh, other uh, Peyton Manning on Zach Wilson clip real quick. The change of scenario for Zach Wilson, I think, is going to be a good one. Um, he, I don't know how many coordinators he had in the time he was there, but I want to say it's at least two. It might have been three. Stoke, as you know, for a young quarterback, the best way to really, I think, screw a young quarterback up is to change coordinators on him every single year, and it drives me crazy. Look, I was very fortunate. I had an old school coach named Tom Moore who was the coordinator the entire time I was there in Indianapolis, right? Tom Brady had different coordinators, right? Charlie Weiss, Josh McDaniels, Bill O'Brien, but it was the same system, right? Belichick said, hey, we're running the same exact system. So it's the same language, right? It's the same verbiage. Uh, you rep each play against different coverages, and you just learn those plays with the reps. And so – you know, look at look at uh, Bryce Young for the Panthers, right? I mean, they fire his coach and coordinator in the middle of the season. He's already he hadn't even played a full year, and he's already on his. I think it's going to be he's on his third coordinator this year. So anyway, that drives me crazy. And so look, uh, I think it's a great uh, chapter two uh, for Zach. Uh, he will get coached hard here uh, by Sean Payton and their staff, uh, which is important for young quarterbacks to be coached hard. He's obviously very talented. He wouldn't have been drafted as high as he would, and. Actually, I've never met Zach, but I got his number yesterday from the Broncos and reached out to him and, you know, welcomed him to Denver and uh, was excited for this new chapter. He sounds excited to be here, so um, hopefully it'll be a good fit. Now, I'm actually going to correct Peyton Manning on something here. Mm. Um, Zach Wilson did have the same offensive coordinator in his uh, two years with the New York Jets. Okay. Uh, Mike LaFleur, who, of course – is the uh, the brother of um, of Matt of, of Matt Lafleur, the uh, the coach of the Green Bay Packers, right? Yeah, Mike working in the 49ers system went over to the Jets, and honestly, I thought it would turn out better for Mike. He's one of those Lafleurs, you know, like oh, it's going to take a mm -hmm. Shanahan system and put it somewhere else. Well, it didn't work. But Peyton has a different system, mm -hmm. and and Peyton Manning says the magic word. We'll see if it's a good fit. Yeah, we'll see if it's a good fit. And, and you know, so Michael Floor comes in. He comes in with Robert Sala, and they both come from San Francisco. So very similar to what we saw with D'Amico Ryans going from the 49ers to Houston. And, of course, it was Ryans who succeeded Sala as the defensive coordinator with the 49ers. So D'Amico Ryans basically did the same thing in – going to Houston and bringing along another um, another 49ers assistant, of course. And um, and that was uh, uh, Bobby Slowick, right? Mm -hmm. And it worked a lot better. <laughs> it worked a lot better with right. C.J. Stroud as so a number so two Bobby overall pick. Head coaching, uh, you know, yes. consideration. Yes, and... So that is something interesting to look at here that you have very similar situations, Houston and the jets number two, overall pick X 49ers defensive coordinator, bringing aboard one of the offensive lieutenants to help guide that number two overall pick. It succeeded marvelously in Houston. It failed miserably with Zach Wilson with the jets. So that's why I do think to myself, I'm not sure about the environment angle for Zach Wilson in terms of things falling short. Now, maybe he will do better in Sean Payton's offense, which 
there are some similarities, but there are some key differences. You and I have discussed them over the years. Sure. A lot of skills translate, but I think what Sean Payton will do is a bit more favorable to Zach Wilson kind of having things a little bit simpler, you know, one, two, and the ball's either out or he's taking off and running with it. But so, does he have a fast yeah. processor is my question. And, mates, that's, because and that's what I'm not sure about. You and I were texting last night because uh, you were going over with some Wilson film. And from my charts, it's like he doesn't yeah. learn from his mistakes at all. He hasn't grown in mm -hmm. the league. Like we've seen little to no growth from Zach Wilson. So I get it. I hear what Peyton's saying. He's going to get coached hard. I get what you're saying. But my question is, is he going to get it? Because the light bulb hasn't come on for that kid. And Stroud was worth the that pick. Yeah. Zach Wilson was clearly overdrafted. Yeah, and the other thing also with Zach Wilson being overdrafted, look at that first round. We can say that it's an 80% miss rate. Yep, in one of those years. Round. It was one of those years. And I know people point that say, okay, well, that's why you shouldn't draft a quarterback. I don't think that's true. Okay, no. That is obviously an unusually high miss rate compared to say the 2018 draft where you had Josh Allen, you had Lamar Jackson. And yes, I will argue that Baker Mayfield has been a good pick. No, Baker's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. So you know, he's taken two teams the postseason. He's been a part of those teams winning in the postseason. So I think you're looking at a 50% hit rate, which is more along the lines of what you're typically talking about when you've got a bunch of first round quarterbacks. 2021 is the outlier in the negative. Why was it the outlier in the negative? Look at the year it came after. It came out of the COVID year. Well, would we have been talking about Zach Wilson being the number two overall pick if he had not flourished in an environment with no fans, no noise. And on top of that for BYU, no power five opponents, teams that with schools that were in the power five at the time. I don't think so. No. Okay. And Trey Lance, I mean, he gets drafted. He played one game, one showcase game. And it wasn't that good. North Dakota State set up against, I believe it was Central Arkansas. And you're right, it wasn't good. Okay? It was not good. So I look, you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, Matt Jones operating in a very pristine environment uh, in the 2020 season at Alabama rather than. The, the hostile territory that you often see in SEC games. Just a, We've talked about how it was a favorable environment in the NFL, and that's why you saw all-time offensive numbers in 2020. Well, the same was true in college football, right? So that, that I believe, led to misevaluations because of how different that year was. And is why we look back on that year and say, okay, the only one of those five who looks like a keeper is Trevor Lawrence. But the thing on Trevor Lawrence is if he'd come out the year before, he might have been the number one overall pick then. He pro actually probably yes. would have been ahead of Joe Burrow. Okay. Yep. Trevor Lawrence came back, but he didn't, he couldn't increase his draft stock. You you knew. You had the you had the body of work when you know you were in a normal environment. And so that, and that's the reason why you knew about Trevor Lawrence. And yes, there have been some ups and downs, but he's a pretty good quarterback. I mean, they're, they're I'd say a majority of the teams would trade places with with the Jaguars to have Trevor Lawrence right now. That's not just based on what he's done, but what he's still expected to do. So again, 2021 outlier year. Zach Wilson, normal year. We're not talking about him being number two overall, even though he's got the, he, you know, the arm talent is there. There's no Physical doubt about that. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, you know, but the rest of it and I don't, the rest of it, it hasn't been. And like you said, he's making the same mistakes in year three that he's making in year one. I mean, in year three, I, you know, I know, I know the temptation is to say, okay, well, he was playing for Nathaniel Hackett. He played for Michael floor. And uh, by the way, where is Michael floor now? Um, he's back with the Los Angeles Rams offensive coordinator. And you know what that means? He's going to be somebody's head coach yes. at some point. Yes, yes, right? He'll go back on track. He wasn't, yep. he wasn't getting bad coaching from Mike LaFleur on the offensive side in New York. No. So that's, again, And but, you know, sometimes, look, and I said this with Drew Locke as well, sometimes it's on the pupil. You know, everyone wanted to say, oh, 
oh, he had, you know, he had bad coach and this, that, and the other. At some point, it's also on the pupil. Maybe the student, maybe the student just doesn't have it, especially well, a quarterback. I would also say sometimes, and what's funny is these are alpha males, right? The ultimate alpha males. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's about desire. I know I'm not giving away too much, but I know Robert Sala hasn't wanted Zach Wilson pretty much since day one. Um, you know, that pick was likely forced on him. Um, so, okay. Um, now you come to a place where the coach does want you. So what does that mean? You know, what does it mean to Zach Wilson to not have a coach who doesn't really like you and doesn't really want you to a coach that's like, I want this. I want to see what this guy can do. I want to see more. You know, what does yeah. that do? The question is, what does that environment look like if you draft a quarterback in round one on Thursday night? And it's all about the, it's all about whoever, JJ, Knicks. It's all about that yeah. guy. And you're the, you know, afterthought. Now, you and I have talked about how the Broncos have an abundance of passing game quarterback people in the building. So you have Sean Payton, you have Joe Lombardi, you have Davis Webb quarterback coach and now you have Pete Carmichael coming in after being with the Saints so in other words you've got enough there to where you can give the rookie individualized instruction but you can also give Zach Wilson individualized instruction Mm -hmm. so you have the intellectual resources to basically walk down the street and chew gum at the same time so to speak but where will Sean Payton's resources be if they draft a first round quarterback? They'll probably be with that first round quarterback if they draft yeah. Bo Nix or whoever. It'll be on that young cat. Mace, uh, I don't think it's worth a second show because honestly, my opinion on this is pretty short. They just put a placeholder on Pat Sertan with the fifth year option. Mm-hmm. He will yes. get a big money deal. Now you're just wrapping them up and we can go over the numbers if you'd like. But mm-hmm. like, okay, the Broncos did a fifth year option on Pat Sertan. Yeah. I mean, of course, like, why would you not? Um, and then you'll continue to, you know, move forward. Spot spot rack, spot RAC has uh-huh. now fully guaranteed 19.802 for the 2025 season. He's on track yes. to become the next highest paid corner in NFL history. 21 million per year, 70 million plus guaranteed whenever a multi-year extension comes to fruition. Yeah, yeah, yeah make it happen. Yeah, the reason why he gets that max number is because he's made a pro bowl. If you make at least, so you've got, you got four tiers. You have the basic fifth year option, which would have been 12.47 million. Then a playing time based fifth year option, 13.3777 million. Um, if you, and then if you make one pro bowl, 17.215, when he got that second pro bowl selection last year, that cranked his, that, that cranked his fifth year option up to the max 19.802. Hey, you're happy he made it. Um, does cost you a little more, but that's okay. But you're right, it's a placeholder because they may look at that figure. And here's another possibility I don't think it's a great possibility, but um, if you don't draft quarterback round one, if you decide to basically punt it and maybe decide to get in the Dak Prescott market if the Cowboys don't get something done with him next year then doing that would be very expensive and you might need to cut yourself a little bit of a break and you might want to get Sertano on long-term contract that at least gets that initial figure down from 19 million to say 14 or 15 million, right? If you're trying to kind of put some pieces together, that's sort of looking over the horizon. I know there are some that would like to see that happen. I'm not sure that's something you want to gamble on. I think when all is said and done, the Cowboys in the final hour hour are going to renew their vows with Dak Prescott. So that I, I put it this way, if I'm the Broncos, I wouldn't make a plan for long-term quarterback and plan to punt this year based on the potential availability of Dak Prescott in 25. Mm-mm-mm. That's a wrap for today. Oh, we're inching ever so closer to yes. the NFL draft. Can't wait. Can't wait for it to get here. Uh, Mace, you will be out at Centura Health. Tra- Is it still Centura? Did they change the name yet? It- it is I'm sure still change their name it, like remarkably. after they bought that. Remarkably, Cecil. <laughs> it is still Centura Health Training Center, not Cross uh, Cross Train. Cross Common Road. Spirit. Common Spirit. Yeah. I was close. C- Centura <laughs> Health is now Common Spirit. And actually, right. I noticed this last week. The 
the step and repeat backdrop behind Sean Payton and George Payton says common spirit health, which right now is getting a heck of a lot of free ad time. Right. But yeah, it's still the Sanctuary Health Training Center. I, I don't okay. get it. I mean, at least it's not a dead company like uh, Sports Authority for the final couple of years that its name was on the stadium. Although it does remind me of how it w- the stadium was once in Vesco Field at Mile High. That was the first name that it had. And eventually Invesco pulled out because they weren't doing much business in the United States anymore. And they were like, okay, why are we sponsoring this stadium here in the States? So in that, you had the name Invesco on it, but they're, um, but they weren't doing a lot of business domestically. It's kind of like uh, how back in the 1990s, Tampa stadium became Houlihan stadium after a chain of restaurants and there wasn't a hula hands within like 150 miles of Tampa. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Well, they did it because the owners of the team, the Glazer family also own hula hands restaurants. And so that was just an easy little sponsorship. But yeah, the last couple of years, the big sombrero was hula hands stadium. God. Okay. What a, ter- what a terrible name, by the way. <laughs> uh centura much much better but you'll be there for the draft i'll be at dave and busters on thursday night come out and see me james palmer john davis bring you to the draft mm-hmm. show we're gonna bring mace on mace just hit me up man because i know you're gonna be yep. swamped so when you can jump on board the show but we're gonna have a big big show for you then still obt we'll be doing a little pre-draft show uh so we'll put in the can but anyway like we got a lot coming up for you we will have a special Thursday night OBT. Mm-hmm. Okay. So everyone late. just midnight something like it's going to be late, but we'll have another one for you. So we'll yeah. have an OBT during the day and then we'll have an OBT after the first round. Hopefully after the Broncos take a quarterback. I mean, that might be late night, low light, you know, well, maybe a cold pop. <laughs> I got to wait till Saturday. Saturday is cold pop yeah. day. But uh, okay. either way, we'll have it all for you right here. And we certainly appreciate all the love. What a big day yesterday on YouTube for us. Thank you all for that. It really, really helps out. Um, when you help us out on YouTube, which they can do that, how, Mace? Like. Comment. Share. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. So that you never... never miss Miss, uh uh, vid vid. that's right he's andrew mason catch him on all the socials at mace denver i'm at cecil lammy saying thanks for watching obt is a bfd stay tuned and stay frosty